guys, okay, hey. so we got the show coming up soon. All right. Um, okay, got, okay, good, we got the art ready. Yes, we, so I was thinking that we could use this. Old Matt, Salvador Matt, Dali Matt, stuff? Yes. No, no, not that, not that, not that one, you want to do that one. That this one? one? Yeah. Well, what does it represent? What's the deeper meaning? What's the other one? Connor, that's your job. Yeah, Connor. Connor, also as the okay. producer, your big job is mainly handle the business stuff and make sure that we don't get sued. We had a few lawsuits a few weeks ago that were really tough. That's why we hired you. But what about the allegories that could come okay. behind this? What? They can't sue us over allegory. Can well, they, they can. That happened they three can. weeks ago. That's besides the point. We handled that lawsuit. All right, everyone. We're good? Matt, we're thanks good. for coming on to Senior Correspondent. We really appreciate that. Thanks. All right. Uh, oh, Sam, I'm going to monologue with you. Oh, so yeah. here's a copy thank for you. you. Here's a copy for you. Oh, thank you. All right, let's go. Okay. Yeah, we need to. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, um, oh, shoot, I forgot one of the main others first. Wait. It's locked. Okay, um, that's wait, fine. Wait, wait, like, can you get in? Oh, oh that, oh. okay, um, hello, so, guys, so even guys. Though, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> okay, we, we can just, we can just go through and do it. Okay, so, um, we're starting the episode, oh! Um, personal submarine. Personal submarine? Yeah, so it's a uh, deep flight dragon. It costs $1.5 million. You have a 360 view of underwater, but you operate it by a joystick. That's pretty Like, I'm literally, it's like, like, a, like almost like a cartoon-esque thing. It's like something you play on, like, your Nintendo 64. Oh, um, those, those things are pretty retro. Nowadays. Yeah, very retro, yeah. But uh, deep sea submarines are not. Deep sea submarines are pretty cool. But yeah, 360 view of underwater, um, which is pretty sweet. Also uses Boeing technology. What's that? So it's like, you know the Boeing oh. aircraft with the planes? Exactly like that. No, I know that's not, not exactly my cup of tea, but it's sort of like whatever floats your boat, you know? Uh. Very good. So, um, that's fun. Uh, oh, we got Birds in Walmart recently. Birds in Walmart? Yeah, it's going to have a modern Alfred Hitchcock movie. Do people already like this stuff? I think we're like this. I mean, it's a, it's a pen, Stephen. I mean, you know, I mean, 90% of comedy is just delivery. That's a good point. And then the, the other 10% is, I mean, like, well. That's like the funny part. Yeah. Or the, that's the funny part. That's like the, the yeah, pun yeah. part. Yeah, whatever. So we had birds eating the raw meat at a Chicopee Walmart. That's that's pretty. Although, well, ironically, any CN reported there were no health codes violated. That's, that's a little weird. But I actually guarantee you, if like, we went to a Walmart and we're like, yo, I like this steak. I'm going to cook this steak right here. And then we start eating the steak. That'd totally be against a bunch of health codes, right? That'd be really bad. That would be really bad. Um, so in other news, uh, the popular baby names in Massachusetts um, are primarily named after celebrities like Duchess, Princess. That's obviously in reference to the British royalty. Uh, but also movies, so like Hazel from uh, oh. Our Stars, yeah. much, much more popular on television shows. But the most popular name for boys was Jackson, but for girls it was Sophia. That's true. So you got Sophia, which is more of like a, um, that means like wisdom. Ooh, forget which language. Is that um, a Greek name? Greek? I, it doesn't sound Latin. Mm -hmm. I know it's uh, the Hagia Sophia Istanbul. Oh, uh, that's, um, that's, that's probably like not Greek. But wait, no, it was in a... Uh... But Hagia Sophia was a Christian church in a Greek Orthodox church. It was Greek. It was a Greek Orthodox church. Greek Orthodox Church. Perhaps, perhaps it is. And then Jackson just it's like son of Jack. Yeah. Whew. Man, it's cold outside. Well, I mean, it is Massachusetts, Stephen. Mm-hmm. That January weather. Weather. Well, well I mean, this this isn't like normal January. This is like January plus global warming. That's an excellent point. Yeah. Excellent. This is nice. Yeah. No. No real earthquakes now. Yeah, I still can't believe Mac gave us after the whole earthquake thing. Uh, that was pretty cool. His healthcare costs went to the roof. Yeah, that's not, that's what, I didn't tell him this, but we hired him. Part of why we were able to hire him is we cut him from the health insurance policy. Oh, that's bad. So that's because we got our good that, health insurance. Uh, I'm so, not sure how I feel about that. Yeah. Um, but then, in other news, uh, or hopefully we'll see a rise in the names of Stephen and Sam soon. That'll be fun. Wouldn't that be nice, Sam? More little to have a young child, more little Sams running around the world, all having fun enjoying themselves. <laughs> That's good. Um, that was uh, from Boston.com, by the way. Oh, and then FIFA's been accused of bribery again. FIFA! Oh, our own little specter, eh? Oh, uh, yeah. Just Definitely. like the James Bond movie organization that Just was incredibly true. nefarious. Very nefarious. But so they broke uh, 47 counts of law. Oh, jeez. Mm. 
It's a lot of law. That's really bad. So they suspended the leadership and bribes of upwards of $150 million. So the bribes we get on this show, like, advertised uh, items are, like, usually around the 10 or 15 cents. But, like, you know, I mean, this is just atrocious. Just another example of why crime does not pay. Mm-hmm. Very, very true. And, uh, yeah, like, it's sort of ironic that it's just soccer, but... Uh, well, I mean, it never works. Crime doesn't pay unless you're the guy from Wolf of Wall Street. He got a lot of money. He, was, that's that's good. Good. he did go to jail and suffered from cocaine addiction, though. So that is that. That that's, certainly did not. That's pay. just that. Uh, just soccer. What else do we have to go on here? Um, oh, there was no pants day earlier in the month of the tea. My favorite. I know, right? So they um, post online uh, instructions on where and when to remove your pants on the tea on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Which is great. And it said to dress warmly despite not wearing pants. But you got your parka, you got your hat and your gloves. And, and your bare and you legs. Just, you just got your bare legs, you know? Um, so that's certainly a great combination good. for Fox Crossfight. Absolutely. It was started in 2002 by an improv group called Everywhere in NYC and has expanded to 50 cities worldwide. Has it expanded to Boston? It, that's what I was mentioning. That's it's the tea. It is in Boston. Yay! And pretty soon, uh, little uh, Russian teenagers will be wearing no pants, and <laughs> Belgian teenagers will be wearing no pants, and it'll be a beautiful, beautiful thing. Beautiful, beautiful, pants beautiful, thing. beautiful, 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 beautiful thing. Um, but definitely not a good idea to have no pants on the Boston General. Just not okay. Definitely. I mean, I'm sure that if we had no pants today, no one would notice here at the evening show. Yeah. Because I like, mean, like, it's all below the waist. Yeah, and we always look at each other. Yes. Although we did have that one episode where we actually couldn't afford to purchase pants, so we just sort of, ooh, we went with it. Yeah, I mean, it was a good Although thing. Although I think no one's going to we adjusted the camera. Yeah, then we had the CGI pants that we, somehow we could afford the CGI ones, but not the real ones. Yeah, I think it was because we got a good deal on it. Yeah, the Vineyard Vines pants nowadays are really expensive. I think part of it was that we uh, had to cut Will's health insurance to get it. We had to cut Will's health insurance. I think everyone's health insurance is in cut except for Connor's. Why, why Connor's? Connor's the big hunt producer, man, so usually you put him in these harrowing situations. The one advantage is that um, if we cut some of our own health insurances, then we can have a greater excuse for throwing someone else uh, into a harrowing situation because we know that their insurance uh, pays for damages. That's a um, good point. Excellent. Oh my gosh, it's modern art critic, Dave Olsey. Oh, hey, okay, Stephen. Sam, Steven. I don't know if you tried to Oh, wait, Stephen. Yes? Hey. Oh, okay, okay, I got it. All right, I'll, I'll be there. Steven, uh, I have to go. My mom called. I have to clean my room. Okay, go clean your room, Sam. Bye. Bye, Bye Sam. And remember, we can't afford pants. That's very important. Excellent. Dave Olsky, how are you, sir? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good, well, welcome. Uh, awesome. This is great. Um, so I was hoping you'd come on the show soon. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, so that would be great. So I have a few practice things here. Um, it's great that you're here. So as I know, uh, you're a modern art critic here at Dover Show One. Yes. Could you speak briefly about your history as a modern art critic? Uh, well, I started when I was kind of young, about age eight, let's say. Uh, I decided to go on a field trip with the rest of my class. We ended up going to a modern art museum. Excellent. Uh, I don't quite remember the name of it. Do you want to walk around, Dave? Uh, sure. So it's document here. We were uh, afraid of like, those modern artists. Yeah. Could you elaborate now? What happened on this field trip? Uh, well, on this field trip, I saw this certain piece that just kind of struck with me. I don't... It was just very elaborate, just kind of got me thinking. What was it like? Like, how, like, what feelings did it evoke within you? Uh, well, it started making me feel a bit, That's sort true, of, sir. intrigued. Thank intrigued. you. Intrigued. You're welcome. I kind of felt a longing to express my feelings for it. Very uh, nice. It is fascinating, fascinating stuff, Dave. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible. Um, so I'm curious, what's your favorite type of modern art? Are you into, like, sculptures or film? Or maybe, I'm trying to think of anything else, like, what other types of modern art? Like a pure painting? A photograph? A physical? Um, I'd say I kind of like the sculptures a bit more. They seem to be more physical in the way that they're made, quite literally. Uh, yes. But also kind of metaphorically, like, uh, they can express something in a different way than a simple painting or some writing can do. That's really insightful, Dave. It's absolutely incredible the work that you do. I know you uh, have achieved your PhD recently. Ah, uh, yes, So that's yes. a big congratulations to that. Thank you very uh, much. I'm go outside get some fresh air. Oh, yeah, sure. That's good. You know, it's tough being in the studio sometimes. You have to 
rents it out quite frequently to other organizations. Uh, uh, so yeah. I know in a certain amount of time we're going to have to uh, start filming outside with um, old-fashioned like hand crank cameras, like in the Charlie Chaplin times. Oh yeah, that reminds me of a piece I've seen recently. Really, Dave? Yes. Let's elaborate. Uh, well, it was a photograph, sort of. It had, it seemed to have been taken with that sort of camera yes. as, it, as it made. So mm. it was a photo of a tree like this one, actually. Like this it one. was a young couple. They were sitting underneath it. It's a very peaceful scene, but off in the corner, you could just see this little dog. And that really struck with me, because I just, I love dogs. Incredible. It's one of my favorite right. things. We can tear up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So much beauty in the world. And I think modern art really captures that beauty quite well. Um, I remember when I went on one of your uh, leadership trips to New yes. York City to the Museum of Modern Art with you. You were, uh, you were not done with your PhD thesis yet, but you were coming close. Um, I went to the Yoko Ono exhibit. Ah, yes. And uh, there were some stairs. And I remember oh, yes. um, you had to go up one at a time. But as you walked up those stairs, I felt like enlightenment just coming to me. You could oh, really yes. feel it, the modern art. Yeah, I remember that quite clearly. Uh, I remember feeling a similar sort of feeling, just myself moving up in the world. You know, you really get that. And modern art just gives you that. Unlike, let's say, like, I don't know, like Picasso or uh, Leonardo da Vinci or Raphael. You don't get the same thought. It's like, okay, they worked hard, and they were well-educated, and they were incredibly talented. But where's the but feeling You don't get the feeling. I mean, you look at some of these, you look at the Mona Lisa, and the first thing that comes to your mind is, that's absolute trash. Exactly. You know, I've never really met many people who share my same ideas mm -hmm. about sort of... To be oh, frank, you're the first, but yeah. um, it's tough, because it just it doesn't give that deep aura of, like, wow, I don't totally get what this is, I probably never will, but I feel something just seems inside. To, a bit too orderly. I feel sometimes art should be chaotic out of hand. It really should. Much like that Chipotle's current uh, situation with all their disease managers. Oh, yes. It's like, you have to admit, yes, people are getting into trouble, and I don't think they should be doing it. But you have to think, my goodness, this is true art. Like, you go to Chipotle, you get a burrito. It's wow, this is art. I mean, like, Madonna on the Rocks, that's just child's play. I know preschoolers that have been recreations of that in their free time with one eye open. Oh, I've it's seen better done by a, it's been seen better done by an infant. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Let's just be unborn as the greatest art of all. Uh, yes, truly. With their unformed minds, they can freely express themselves. And their emotions are just so much more. Oh, so much. So much. Like the meat the birds were getting at a Walmart and Chick Fil A recently. Just truly um, raw. Very I'm trying to think of what else. Now, Dave, what for you strikes you as being like truly artistic in the world besides modern art? Obviously, nothing comes close to modern art, and I think it may even be a disservice to modern art itself to even call anything else modern. But is there anything else that sticks out to you? Hmm. He might know is a perfectly acceptable and possibly preferable answer. You know, I would say no if this has happened to me couple days prior, but mm. I've recently had an experience that was quite like any, quite unlike any other that mm. I've had before. I was, now that you've completed your PhD, that whole journey. Yeah, like, yeah, so yeah that really it. opened up my mind a bunch. It really does. Uh, I was riding along the roads, and I saw a dog, a dog on the side of the roads, and I thought to myself, as I said before, I love dogs. Yes, you truly do. So, I was thinking to myself, you know, that dog it's really being artistic right there. Mm. Just lying on the side of the road, possibly it's like performance art, but through like a, an animal, that much more raw. Possibly eating something, not sure what, going too fast to see, but just so pure. And, and you got that, that feeling, and that is truly art. I went up to that dog and I gave it a good pet for being such a good artist. Mm. You know, truly, truly beautiful stuff, Dave. Um, so Dave, uh, I have a game that I'd like to play with you when you come on the show, so we can just um, do this right now. Okay. So, the title, the name of the game is, sorry, one moment, uh, ah, Let Us Do Art. Ah, uh, yes. All right. So I'm going to go back to the game. So I'm going to give you some topics. I'm going to see sort of how you want to interpret them in an artistic manner. Um, so, let's begin. Topic one. Alright, number one. A cat 
in a box, covered in water bottles, filled with goldfish. What's your artistic interpretation? Hmm. You know, I think that kind of represents the sort of trapped feeling one might get when they're stuck at line in some sort of restaurant. Or a trip. They're also just very thirsty, just want to get there. They really just want to get something to drink, but the line's just so long. Do you think it's a criticism of fans and patients here in America? I think it might be. I think it might be. It's a very interesting, very interesting idea. <laughs> Sort of make out a more rustic feeling rustic, okay. to express the way that we're being too much sucked into our electronics and our televisions and that sort of thing, and that we should really go back more to a wilder feeling of grass mm. and hair. I like that grass and hair and old Sam Gray involved. Yes, yes, excellent. Our last one. And arguably, I believe the most artistic of them all is the word art, but still spelled with an extra A at the front. Spelled A A R T. How would you interpret this? I have never heard such genius before. I know, it's quite incredible. I am honestly stunned. I don't know what to say about that. I. It's more art than finest. Very, that's the Monomos the... tore, tore down their whole Van Gogh section just to put this one piece in. I can see why they would. It they is... kept the Matisse, but uh, it's an impressive piece. Mm, absolutely. I have no idea. I don't know. What else to think? Um, so, Dave, do you think that people, do you, would you feel comfortable talking about some of these topics on my show? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I could do that. That it sounds seems... very good. Oh, that was quite wonderful today, this afternoon, so I really appreciate you uh, yeah, no coming problem. up. Very good. That's excellent. So thank you, sir. Yeah, appreciate thank you very it. Much. Congratulations on the PhD once again. Oh, thank you. So I'll see you around. I'll see you at the show. All right. I'll give you the things. You. Obviously, I don't know how the budget's going to work out, so we may have to use the chapel cameras outside. But if we're lucky, maybe we can possibly use the studio. Okay. So I'll see you later. Great. See you around, my friend. All right. All right, Kevin. So you got the budget figured out. You got the insurance figured out. All right. You got Sam. We were talking to Mac earlier. He had the horse thing on his hand. That's good. Got Dave Olsky cleared up. Got the monologue figured out. Got the popular baby name thing. Work on that. Take me a second. What else? Okay. Being built. Oh, Talks about some camera work, but anyway, we'll get back. Done. Okay. Ah. There Thank you. You are welcome. Oh, the studio. Hello. 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 Okay. All right. I guess I'll check this door down here. Open. Ah, Mr. Reedy, how are you doing, sir? Good. Been doing some of the rehearsals for um, obviously the next episode. Uh, do you know where the gang went? Yeah, anyway, some other man. Okay, do you think it could possibly be in the band room? It might be. I haven't heard of them, but I haven't seen anyone. I've just been here sleeping. Okay, cool. All right, thanks. Thank you, sir. Very good. Guys, hello? Right. One, two, one, two, three, four.
Come out with slush fun. Let's just say health care is going to be tight. Okay, that's fair enough. The benefit packages are um, entirely necessary, but I guess I have to cut them anyway. So, what is this? What happened? Well, um, so, see, we were kind of bored. Mm. I mean, I, I, I faced green one, so I think that we were kind of bored. We figured we just sort of jammed. And yeah. Then, I mean, we, we kind of had to, uh, I mean, I gave up my health care policy. I know, Ryan, you haven't been for a month to put health care. Let's see, he's yeah. already forgotten about it. Yeah, it's excellent. I'm glad I'm proud of you, Ryan. Yeah, instead, we use that. We use the money that we gained from that to uh, buy all this stuff. Very, very good. So, did we um, use this in the studio, like an in house band? Yeah, that would be real fun. That would be very good. It's excellent. Like it, what do you think? Well, it's not the penguin, by the way, the raccoon. It's a. Uh, it, it's, it's a good luck. It matches the theme, yeah. Very good. <coughs> Excellent. So, um, I guess since, well, we can't pay you, and oh, that's cool. I guess we need to get a title. Well, you guys are sort of all the interns, so I guess we'll be the unpaid interns. Oh, boy. Excellent. I'm proud to get the house band. Um, oh, Mac, we need to cut your salary, though. Mm -hmm. See how to afford this. Are you cool with that? Don't worry, you'll still get the, the free uh, flight to whatever city we're going to have to snatch you to. But like, okay, you're good? Excellent. Oh, I actually need to talk with you about that uh, with uh, Big Hunk's producer man, Connor Brown. Is it this way? Cool. Well, you guys, uh, as you are. Hey, Steven. Say well, thanks, guys. Always a pleasure. Working on the next episode. Awesome. Well All right.
Discussing with Matt the fact that um, we were adding him to the band, so we're getting banned. Oh, which is fantastic. Great. So they yeah. just formed that. That's awesome. They're the unpaid interns. So no, because they're working on some of the business dealings. Yeah, so sure. Let's talk with and Matt. Also, yes. One more thing. Okay, cool. I think I found the DVD cover for this great episode you've been planning. Okay. What do you think? I love it. It's fantastic. It's like what the Beatles did, but better. Exactly. Can everybody come in here for a moment? Oh, uh, sure. Okay. So for the band. We'll probably have them, like, maybe somewhere in here. All right, I like it. That's good. I, I, let's see how much room we have. We don't have that much room in here. Huh, well, I guess I'll go over here. We'll keep all the normal stuff over here. And it looks like, yeah. Mac will, uh, obviously, will beam you in via the um, modern technology that we got. And he will. Excellent. He seems Thank like you, sir. Person. Are you okay? 